is the Canon M50 any good for video? That's a question that I get asked a lot, and today that's what we're talking about, so let's jump into it. Welcome to Kai Creative, my name is Kai Song. We talk a lot about camera gear and filmmaking here, so if any of that stuff interests you, then do consider subscribing to the channel. So I've been using the Canon M50 now since July of 2019, and this little camera really packs a punch when it comes to video. In fact, I've used this little camera for events filming, for short films, for travel, personal projects, vlogging, and I even trialed it recently for some corporate interviews to see what it would be like. And of course, I'll be including some sample footage of that content in this video. So when it comes to video on the M50, what options are available to you? Well, first up, 4K in 24 and 25 frames per second. And 4K is probably one of the options that attracted you to this camera in the first place. Now, I'm actually filming this video now in 4K on the Canon M50. So what do you think? Did you even notice? Well, actually, it's not too bad, but there are a few issues with using it, and one of those is the crop factor. Yes, 4K comes with a 1.6x crop, on top of the already existing 1.6x APS-C crop factor, because this is a crop frame camera. So the M50 films 4K at a pretty large 2.56x total crop. And this renders your 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens to about 38 to 115 millimeters. So not only do we have a crop, but we also lose the ability to use dual pixel autofocus in 4K. So you can't use that tap focus. And you might have noticed that the M50 was actually hunting for focus on my face on that last clip outside. Now that's not to say that the 4K is completely unusable on the M50 as some people have suggested. The M50 has focus peaking lines so you can shoot your video manually and then use the focus peaking lines to ensure that you have sharp focus. In addition to this, you can of course get your hand on some adapters and speed boosters like the Viltrox speed booster, which we will be talking a little bit about later. And this means that you can put full frame camera lenses on your M50 and you can multiply that focal length by 0.71 and then rein in some of that crop. One little side point here is to make sure that you are using decent SD cards, especially when filming in 4K. Now I use the SanDisk Extreme Pro U3 SDXC cards. These are really good to use so that your 4K doesn't cut out while recording. Now there's also an option to film in 120 frames per second for super slow motion, but only at 720p, which is a little bit of a letdown for some as the quality isn't great. Now moving on to the 1080p, you can film at 24, 25, 30, 50 and 60 frames per second. And the settings that I normally use on the M50 are 1080 swapped between the 24 and 60 frames per second. And of course, in this mode, you can fully utilize dual pixel autofocus as well as have the face tracking. And again, 24 frames per second for cinematic video is something that a lot of filmmakers will be very interested in. We have already briefly mentioned the Viltrox EF to M2 speed booster. This little piece of kit allows you to connect your EF glass, which really opens this camera up to a lot of possibilities, especially for video and filmmaking. I actually recently took the M50 to the Winter Lights Festival in Canary Wharf, London. I mounted it to the Roniness, and the speed booster basically converts my 24 to 70 f-stop 4L lens to roughly a 27 to 80 millimeter f-stop 2.8 almost-ish equivalent type lens when shooting at 1080p, which of course means a wider field of view and better low light capabilities. So lost, scared to find reasons to not be without 
M50 also has digital image stabilization, which is fine for slow, controlled handheld shots, and the kit lens also has image stabilization built in, which is great. But I would still advise turning off the digital IS and mounting the camera to a gimbal or something similar for smooth movement shots. And being a mirrorless camera, the M50 is lightweight, making it ideal for something like the Ronin S, even with the adapter and a heavy L lens attached. When it comes to recording times, the M50 can still record for up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds, which is a decent recording limit for a 4K camera at this level, which controversially might make it possible as a B cam or a C cam candidate for some of your professional filming projects. When it comes to picture profiles, you have the standard Canon profiles that you always get with Canon cameras, but you also have the option to download and install Cine Styles, which is a free flat profile that you can use to color grade your footage later on. I also recently tested this camera out for corporate interviews using the 1080 aspect ratio, 24 frames per second, Cine Styles and the Viltrox Speed Booster, so I could film with the 24 to 70 millimeter Canon L lens. I ended up filming 15 interviews back to back and one tip here if you're planning on doing something similar is to make sure you use the dummy battery pack connected to a power pack so that you don't run out of battery. And this is a well known issue with the Canon M50, the battery life is not great. So what video file formats does the M50 use? Well the M50 records in MPEG-4, AVC or Advanced Video Coding also known as H.264 and these files are really simple to use with your editing setup. I use Adobe Premiere Pro and haven't had any issues using these video files. Even the 4K files seem to work pretty well in Premiere without slowing my machine down too much. And when it comes to bit rates, the M50 has a maximum bit rate of 120 megabits per second when shooting in 4K, 60 megabits per second at full HD when shooting at 50 or 60 frames per second, and if you're shooting in 24, 25 or 30 FPS, you'll drop down to about 30 megabits per second. So I actually had an opportunity to use this camera at a corporate event and I decided to use it with the Speed Booster, the 24 to 70 millimeter L lens, Cine Styles and the Ronin S gimbal just to get some movement B-roll shots and I filmed everything in 1080p at 60 frames per second. Actually I think it did a good job in some areas, it did have issues with flicker in some of the locations and trying to correct that flicker by changing the shutter speed led to choppy motion blur issues with the footage when trying to interpret it at 24 frames per second. I also used it outside to get some establishing shots of the venue and outside in that natural light it didn't have any issues at all. So I did manage to get some nice slow motion establishing shots that I could use in the promo. Towards the end of the night I thought I'd try it out to get some of the venue dinner and dancing but because of the low light in the room there were issues with grain and even though you can use the 24 to 70 millimeter at f-stop 2.8 the picture is still a little noisy and you may or may not notice it here depending on how YouTube has compressed this video. I also took the M50 with me when I was traveling around Japan a couple of months ago and this camera is just perfect for travel, vlogging and getting those b-roll shots. So hopefully this video has given you some food for thought when it comes to using video on the Canon M50. I generally use full frame cameras for my video projects but I have been reaching more and more for the Canon M50 when it comes to travel, casual, social content because it's just so easy and light and convenient to use. And with that Viltrox speed booster attached, it really opens up so much more for filmmaking on this camera. And I find that it's becoming more and more a part of my everyday filming life. So I hope you found this content useful. If you do, consider giving us a like and sharing this video with someone who might also find it useful. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Stay creative, imagine, implement, and inspire. And I'll catch you next time on Kai Creative.